Adenians are some of the most interesting plants on earth. They're relatives of the passion fruits, but they grow in some of the harshest, most arid regions of the earth. To survive, they've taken on some pretty incredible forms. A lot of them have got these fat cordiciform bases, like this Adenia glauca. And indeed, some of them exhibit pretty wild spines, like this juvenile Adenia globosa. Now, another defining trait of the Adenias though, which makes them particularly frustrating for someone who likes to grow plants from seed, is that they are confounding when it comes to germination. Today is less about providing answers as it is about seeking them. Today, I'm gonna to be walking through a process of experimentation where I try and unlock the mysteries to something that has confounded and bewildered me for years. How best to germinate Adenia seeds. So join me on this journey of exploration and experimentation and you never know, maybe we'll learn something together. The thing about growing Adenia from seed isn't that they're impossible to germinate. No, absolutely not. This is a pot of Adenia kirkii, little cordiciform plant from Eastern Africa, which I sowed just last season. No, it's not about getting them to germinate, it's about understanding the conditions that get them to germinate. Because the thing with these guys is, I kept them in a hot box for the duration of spring and summer and there was no movement whatsoever. The temperature in there essentially replicated their habitat conditions. But when I finally gave up on them, took them out, put them on a dark shelf in the laundry, stopped watering them, a couple of weeks later, they all popped up. So what exactly is it? That's what we're gonna try and find out today. So this is gonna be a bit of an exploration into the unknown. So what tools are we gonna be using in this process of experimentation? Well, we start off with our propagation mix. This is a soil that I've customized myself, made essentially from a blend of pumice, zeolite, bit of vermiculite, some crushed granite, and then organic matter in the form of a store-bought cactus mix. Nothing too special. I don't think this is gonna have a big impact on germination rates, but we'll record it just for future's sake anyway. Of course, I've got pots. I've got plenty of labels, so I know what's going into each pot. And then, because I have a suspicion that it could be the swings in temperature overnight that induces these seeds to pop, I'm gonna be putting them here in a greenhouse rather than in an artificially lit, artificially heated space. So with that in mind, gone old school, got a propagation box here, sealed lid, it's got some vents we can control humidity with. And what I'll be doing is I'll be recording both overnight temperatures and daytime temperatures, as well as when and how often I water so that I have a decent record of perhaps the conditions that these things might germinate in, if they germinate. Of course, the other thing that we need are seeds. Let's talk about them now. So here's a bit of a roll call of the seeds that I'll be sowing today. And if you have a look at the pictures beside me, you'll see the incredibly varied forms that these plants can take. So we start off, we've got Adenia ballii, then we've got Adenia petuellii, Adenia volkensii, which, if you remember from my poisonous plants video, is potentially a rival as the most poisonous plant on the planet. We've also got Adenia epigaia, Adenia ellenbeckii, and lastly, Adenia kirkii, which I harvested from seed pods on my own plants last season. There's also a lot of information on the internet that kind of hints at the fact that Adenia seeds have quite a long viability. And so I'm gonna be re-sowing some seeds that I tried last year and gave me no results. Just to see what happens, what's the harm, right? So amongst that, we've got Adenia pseudoglobosa and the related Adenia globosa. We've got Adenia lapiazacola, Adenia pharyngolavensis, as well as a couple of pots of more Adenia kirkii that never did anything for me. So let's jump into the process now and hopefully, in a few months' time, we might see some results. 
as you can see, I've pre-filled these pots with my potting mix. Don't need to watch me do that, that would be tedious. What I'm gonna do now though, is I'm going to bottom water these pots. Just filling up the propagation tray. This is straight water, nothing in it, no fungicides, nothing like that. Realistically, these aren't gonna need any serious treatment. Give them a bottom water, lets the pot soak it up and really saturate that soil. We wanna make sure that our soil is quite drenched. I will tip out any excess at the end of this process, but bottom watering, in my opinion, best way to ensure that your pots are gonna be soaked right through and ready for seeds to be sown. So I'll give those a couple of minutes to take up the water and then we'll get into sowing the seeds. So you can see my soil is nicely saturated here. I've got a label, species name in this case, sowing some Adenia volkensii and the number of seeds going into the pot so I can keep a good record. Now, these seeds, as you can see, are quite large and the plants themselves can grow reasonably sizable with a bit of speed. So I'm gonna limit the number of seeds per pot to about four or five, placing them evenly spaced because the seeds are large enough. We can put them in by hand, just very lightly press them into the soil there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover these seeds with a mineral top dressing. If you've seen any of my other seed sowing videos, you'll know that my top dressing of choice is a product called My Fan Stone. I like it because it changes color when it's wet, gives you a good indicator of when it's time to rewater, but anything will do. You can use pumice, you can use vermiculite or scoria, crushed granite, doesn't really matter. We're just gonna put a relatively thin layer up to the top of the pot over those seeds. And what that's going to do is it'll create a nice humid environment around the seeds, which hopefully it's gonna spur them to germinate when the temperatures are just right. Now, I'm gonna repeat this process for all those other seeds and we'll go from there. So all those seeds are now sown and labeled. These are going into a nice shady spot on the bottom shelf at the back of the greenhouse here. We're gonna keep an eye on them. Like I said, keep a record of how often they get watered and those temperatures. So I'll be very interested to see what sort of results we get. I'm gonna be checking back in in a few months time, give you an update on these bad boys. But for now, it's the beginning anyway of our Adenia quest. Check back in in the future, see what happens.